So recently, The Daily Show with Trevor Noah put out a video on veganism, what has some other segments too, but the first part is on kind of uh, veganism and climate change. It's really short. It's like two minutes of the video, I think. Ryan from Happy Healthy Vegan and Mike the Vegan both made response videos to it, basically saying that they found some of the jokes, particularly one of the jokes about vegans being smug, essentially, uh, kind of offensive. Mike's video is actually more about the IPCC report, just in general, he talks about that. And he makes some good points talking about how they kind of bury the whole thing about a vegan diet and climate change and whatnot, which is true, and about how they don't want to, they're not going to prescribe a vegan diet to people, which they do say, which on the one hand, I, I understand it's not a dietetic organization, but on the other hand, and this is something that Jenny Messina talked about a while, while ago when talking about kind of the best diet and how dietetic organizations don't take into account climate change, right? When talking about the best diet, they're only talking about nutrition and, and health and whatnot. And it's, it's kind of the same, right? So you have the environment and climate change, and they're not going to talk about diet. And then you have the dietitians who aren't going to talk about climate change. And it's like, I get it, but they're also kind of, they're both kind of pretty important. And you can't really talk about the best diet, in my mind, without talking about the effect that it has on the planet. And you can't really talk about the planet without talking about one of the things that affects it the most. And it's, it's a little bit silly to say, well, here's the best diet, quote unquote, in terms of the environment, but we're not going to tell people what to eat. Okay. But that's not really what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the, the reason, I guess, ultimately that they made their videos, which again was that they felt uh, kind of offended by the jokes that Trevor makes or says, you know, I don't know who actually wrote the jokes, whoever writes for The Daily Show, I guess. Um, so for those who don't know, in case you don't know, The Daily Show is not a news show primarily. It is a, an entertainment show. It's a comedy show. There is news in it, like actual news, current events, but the goal is not to just present the news to people. The goal ultimately is to make people laugh via the news. That's not to say the show is actually funny. In my opinion, it's pretty milk toast, and it's always been that way, even when Jon Stewart hosted. <laughs> I mean, you know, humor is subjective, but I always felt that it wasn't it wasn't particularly funny. And I like Jon Stewart a lot. I like Trevor Noah too. I think he is so cute. <laughs> like I've watched several clips from The Daily Show just because I think he's he's really adorable and sometimes his terrible delivery kind of works. But yeah, I don't I don't find the show particularly funny. It's it's okay, you know, it's whatever. Um and I don't find this bit about climate change and vegans any different really. Like the vegan jokes are are stale. By the way, I'm not going to show any clips or anything here because I don't know is Comedy Central going to claim that? Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I don't really trust like larger organizations, Comedy Central, BBC. I know they do it for everything. Uh, yeah, I don't want to really trust them when it comes to something like that. So I'd rather just not use the clips. But again, it's two minutes. Go watch it. But basically the jokes are like, you know, the, the oatmeal thing, you know, climate change is bad and it's only going to get worse. It's like if you leave a bowl of oatmeal out to sit and then you come back and you've got a new roommate. Like, so bad. <laughs> Like, obviously he's delivering it better than me, but like, it's not, it's not much better than the way I just said it. And then there's the joke about uh, veganism actually being worse for the environment because the hot air emerging from people bragging about how good they are will heat up the planet even faster. That seems to be the joke that, that Ryan and Mike took the, the most issue with, I guess. And then there's another joke about cows that I'll share later. Point is, they're stale. And I mean, that makes sense, right? The writers are not vegan, very likely, and they're writing for an audience that is not vegan, very likely, right? Predominantly not vegan. So of course, the jokes are going to be things that as vegans, we've heard a million times before. But to regular people, you know, people who maybe know like one or two vegans, but don't really know much about veganism generally, it might be funny, right? The joke about hot air emerging from our mouths because we're constantly talking about how great we are and that's heating up the planet faster. Probably funny. This reminds me of a ContraPoints video, Natalie Wynn's video, The Darkness, where she talks about humor and she talks about kind of the, the best jokes about a particular subject or a community coming from within that community, right? Coming from people who know the most about a community or about a particular subject in 
her case specifically, she's talking about the transgender community. Look, half my job is telling jokes about trans people. I live for trans jokes. I just don't think cis people are very good at telling them because they don't know enough about trans people to know what the funny things are. And being transgender is honestly the perfect topic for comedy. Like, you used to live as one gender and then you became a different gender. Every single thing about that is absolutely hilarious. But humor is in the details. And Ricky Gervais does not know the details because he's clearly never been close to a trans person and that's why he's still telling these Tinker Toy 2015 Caitlyn Jenner jokes. I think the same goes for vegan. You know, outside of the trans community, it's what, attack helicopter? That's that's the joke. That's like the one joke. And then outside of the vegan community, it's what? How can you tell if a person is vegan? Do I even need to finish it? On the other hand... People ask me if I miss uh, meat or dairy. <laughs> I, I mean, I miss being liked. I don't miss cheese, but I do miss getting asked to do things. Non-vegans like Trevor calling vegans unlikable is expected. It's boring, right? But a vegan calling himself unlikable because he's vegan is unexpected. It's self-deprecation. Self-deprecation is kind of inherently funny, I think, and disarming. It's the darkness, really. I mean, he's making fun of the sad fact that many vegans are ridiculed, even hated, just for being vegan. This study found that only drug addicts were evaluated more negatively than vegetarians and vegans. But making fun of a group of people that everyone else already makes fun of, and in the same way that everyone else already makes fun of them, is not funny, it's lame, it's ultimately punching down. But I didn't feel offended by the segment like Ryan and Mike did. Uh, going into it, you know, after seeing the title, I mean, I assumed that there were going to be some jabs at vegans. I think that's a pretty safe assumption. But then having watched it, I was pleasantly surprised. I thought that the message overall was pretty great. You know, it was like, like, hey, climate change is a thing, which isn't surprising coming from The Daily Show, but also that meat is bad for the environment and accelerates climate change and we should eat less of it. All of the the straight parts of the segment, you know, the part where Trevor isn't making a, a joke, you know, the setup, express exactly that, right? They show all these news clips where they're talking about, you know, beef and what is it, 200 and 25 grams of beef producing the same amount of greenhouse gas emissions as driving what was it 55 cars one mile something like that the clip that he shows it says the source that it comes from but i was too lazy to actually go to it go to the study and see if that was correct and go through the the numbers i mean we know that beef is bad for the environment so i don't really give a shit if 225 grams of beef is is 55 cars or you know maybe it's actually 50 cars like who okay it's bad let's Let's move on. <laughs> not that, I mean, like, it's important to be correct. And it's important not to exaggerate. I'm not saying that they are. I'm assuming that is correct information, but I didn't actually verify it for myself. So like, if anyone wants to do that, cool. I'll, I was going to say, I'll pin your comment, but I don't usually read most of the comments. So I probably won't, but maybe other people will upvote it and it'll end up at the top of the comments. If you tweet it at me, I'm more likely to see it. And then I'll probably be able to go back and, and pin your comment. Point is, they show all these news segments that are just, you know, basically just stating like, hey, meat is bad for the environment, right? And the, the jokes aren't questioning that, right? And then the, the setup of the entire segment, uh, he says, let's begin with climate change. It's the gradual disaster that will eventually wipe us out if we don't take it seriously. I fully agree with what Trevor's saying here about climate change and taking it seriously. And he seems to be sincere here. So I'm assuming this is the real Trevor speaking, not the comedian Trevor. Um, yes. Again, this is kind of the setup of the joke. It's clear that this is what the writers and probably Trevor believe. And the politics of The Daily Show are obviously very left leaning. And so like, you know, most people on the left believe that climate change is a thing. But yeah, this is just this is kind of how jokes work, right? You say something that's kind of uncontroversial or maybe common sense. In this case, it's just kind of a, a fact about the world um, or just some something to do with current events, right? And then you make a joke about it. Climate change is real and scary and we need to do something about it. Fact but we're lazy, meat-obsessed fucks, so we won't. Joke, except not, because it's true. My point is that they're not trying to hide 
their true beliefs, which I think is kind of what Ryan is implying. Like Trevor's like, this is the real Trevor talking and then he's making jokes and he doesn't agree with those jokes. No, I don't, I don't think that's what's going on. I think it's, I think they're just jokes. Point is, going back to, you know, being pleasantly surprised by the material in the segment, I think it's really important to just kind of remember and remind ourselves how amazing this is and how different things are now, which Ryan does mention briefly, you know, before complaining about jokes on a joke show. Mainstream news and entertainment is not only seriously discussing climate change, but seriously discussing meat reduction, even vegetarianism, even veganism. This is not something that we saw a decade ago, even five years ago. I say this not because I think that we need to be just oh so grateful to Trevor and the writers of The Daily Show and like kowtow to them, you know, thank you so much for talking about the environment and meat's effect on the environment. Um, I, I bring it up because I think it's so important for us to celebrate progress like this. No matter what your cause, if it's animal rights, trans rights, immigrant rights, it's so easy to get bogged down in the negative because there's just so much of it. There is so much suffering. An unfathomable number of animals live lives so cruel. We, we can't begin to imagine what it's really like. There are U.S. citizens being detained for days because of the color of their skin. It's overwhelming and focusing on it can have serious negative side effects for ourselves, for our mental well-being. That's why all of us should get off of Twitter, Swayze. One way to combat this is with positive stuff, you know, like cute animal videos, you know, videos and, and content that show animals not on a farm, right? But in a sanctuary or something, or even as pets like Esther the Wonder Pig, you know, animals that are living, actually living happy, healthy lives. I love Crouton the Cow. That's like my new favorite thing. Positive news story like the Impossible Burger now being at Burger King nationwide. Is that true? I keep thinking that and being like, no, it's not nationwide. I'm pretty sure it actually is nationwide. That's amazing. Um, and then little stuff like this, you know, an entertainment show that reaches hundreds of thousands of people a night talking about meat reduction for the environment, like it's just common sense. Going back to the jokes themselves, I guess ultimately the thing for me is context, right? A Republican could make all the same jokes that Trevor made in that segment, and it would not at all be funny to me, like not even in a like, okay, that's that's kind of bad, but Trevor's cute. What? Okay, it's kind of funny. Like, no. Because in that case, it wouldn't be someone, you know, ultimately making fun of themselves and their unwillingness to go vegan and their unwillingness to change. In the case of a Republican who probably doesn't even believe in climate change, they're making fun of climate change itself. They're making fun of veganism itself. They're making fun of change itself. That's not funny. I can laugh or kind of like, okay, kind of, it's kind of funny, you know, a little chortle, I guess, at people like Trevor poking fun at vegans, even though he isn't vegan, because he at least knows that ideally, yeah, everyone would be vegan, or at least, yeah, we would not be eating meat, period. But I can't laugh at shit like this from people who either don't believe climate change exists, Crowder, or someone like Blair, I don't know her personal views on climate change, but she is a Trump supporter. So she is supporting an administration that doesn't believe in climate change and is doing anything in its power to speed it along. But I don't think any of that excuses this one particular joke, the kind of eat the cow joke, in my opinion. Um, he says, it's mind blowing to learn that producing half a pound of beef puts out the same greenhouse gas emissions as driving 55 cars for a mile. I guess the only solution is that we have to drive cows. Think about it. We get to eat them when we get to our destination instead of of valet parking, it's filet parking. Maybe it's just me, but um, I don't know. I think there's a big difference between making fun of vegans and making fun of animal death, killing animals for food when you still support killing animals for food, <laughs> like via your actions. I don't know. I, I think there's a big difference there. I don't think this particular joke is one that's going to age well for Trevor at all. <laughs> like, this is definitely going to be a, a, a chicks with dicks sort of joke for him. But regarding Ryan's um, point about the, the hot air joke, you know, that vegans are smug, um, he says that it reinforces the harmful stereotype that we are, you know, smug. So that joke was just plain, just not funny. It was just downright offensive. It plays off the stupid false stereotype that vegans, we all think we're better than everyone. Uh, 
I don't know, doesn't his video kind of do the same thing? When we see prominent vegan YouTubers complain about about jokes, like complain about comedy like this. I don't know. Doesn't it kind of reinforce the negative vegan stereotype that we're humorless, you know, like sticks up our asses sort of thing? Or maybe I don't know what I'm talking about with any of this because looking at the comments on this video, on Trevor's video, they are overwhelmingly negative. I don't think I found one that was positive, which I guess makes sense. You know, climate change is real. And I think most of us know that nothing's going to be done about it for a long time. You know, people are not going to reduce their meat consumption. They're not going to drive less, at least not for a while. We need government intervention, but unfortunately, number one, Republicans are the worst, and number two, the Senate filibuster. And even, you know, the Democratic candidates, most of them don't really seem to be making global warming a priority, or they have no idea what policies would actually be effective. So yeah, I, I get it. It's hard to laugh about. And unfortunately, the joke about, you know, the do we eat vegan or do we let the world burn? You know, does the world just end? Well, you know, we've had a good run, right? Like, that's funny because it's true. Again, it's the darkness. You know, people would rather keep doing what they're doing and let the world burn than just eat differently. Even people on the left are doing this, you know, trying to put all of the blame for climate change on corporations as a way to absolve themselves of any responsibility. I don't think I need to explain how ridiculous that is. And the Daily Show writers and Trevor are ultimately in this category, you know, recognizing that eating meat is good, that being vegan is good, but not actually doing it, which, you know, at, at least they acknowledge it. That's great. But ultimately, actions speak louder than words. The planet doesn't give a shit whether you're a conservative eating a meat-centered diet or a liberal eating a meat-centered diet. You both suck. I know this video has been all over the place. There's a reason for that. You know, I kind of started the video thinking it was mostly going to be about Ryan and Mike's responses and how I thought they were pretty ridiculous. Being so serious about jokes and being so offended by jokes. Not that jokes can't be offen offensive. Obviously, there are jokes that can, but I thought these were pretty milquetoast and I didn't find them offensive at all. And watching their responses, I thought, like, Jesus, okay, so we can't make jokes about vegans now? Like, this is so, this is lame as shit. <laughs> and then I started writing this. And in the process of writing it, I realized that I, I don't know, I was wrong. I still don't agree that the hot air joke is offensive, although I do think the filet parking joke is offensive. Fuck that joke. Uh, but it, uh, humor is subjective. And I tend to make fun of myself and communities that I identify with like all the time. I say fucking vegans about as much as I say fucking white people. You know, I've been an atheist my whole life, but every single atheist I've ever met in real life has been the worst, <laughs> like just the most obnoxious person ever. Agnostics are pretty cool though. So yeah, I normally would have tossed a script like this because like, what even is this? It's such, <laughs> it's such a goddamn mess. But I think that it's important to show that sometimes I mean, often you start with a particular position or you think that this thing is true and this is the thing. And then after researching, or in this case, just kind of thinking through my own thoughts via writing, you know, you come to a completely different conclusion. I think it's good to show that sort of thing. I mean, I'm kind of... <laughs> I'm basically like, look how smart and objective I am, you guys. <laughs> like, I'm willing to change my position. Aren't I awesome? I don't know. That's not the, that's not the point. The point is, I don't know what the point is, because honestly, I still think this video is stupid and I didn't really want to do it. But partner was like, this is great. You should do it. So I'm doing it. I'm trying to sell this video to you, but I haven't even sold it to myself. I don't know, to try to to wrap it up so it's a little bit more cohesive. Basically, these these are the things I said. To vegans, Trevor's jokes are really just stale and boring, right? Um, I think good comedy benefits from better knowledge of a subject or of a community. And self-deprecation, rather than just making fun of other groups and kind of punching down and stereotypes and that kind of shit. But to Trevor's audience, you know, maybe these jokes were funny and maybe they opened some more people's hearts and minds up to meat reduction. It did expose a lot of people to an important message. However, I mean, <laughs> isn't humor kind of a defense mechanism? Isn't it kind of a way to get us to stop thinking about 
a, a certain thing that we don't want to think about, you know, kind of a way to get rid of some cognitive dissonance or to make a subject seem not as important as it is. I mean, that's honestly what I use humor for a lot of the time. When things are overwhelmingly terrible, I'll often make a joke <laughs> or even just like I'll read something terrible on Twitter and I'll look for something funny, right? Vegans complaining about vegan jokes might come across as, I don't know, kind of whiny and like, I, I don't know, like grow up, grow a pair, you know, <laughs> type of thing. But again, like the, the comments on the video are like overwhelmingly positive. So maybe most people seeing this, seeing the segment already agree that this act, that the jokes are just stale or even just inappropriate, right? Like it's inappropriate to be making fun of vegans. And I think part of it too, I think a lot of people are taking it as making fun of climate change. I mean, obviously they're they're not, but I think because again, it's such an important issue. I think a lot of people just cannot joke about it. And if vegan is roped in there too, and if you're talking about something that can um, ameliorate climate change, then like people, at least people on the left are not gonna have it. <laughs> it's just not, it's not appropriate, but maybe it is veganism. You know, maybe I am behind the times and maybe we just can't joke about vegans now, or at least non-vegans cannot make jokes about vegans now, which, hey, I'm, that's cool. I'm okay with that. You know what? I just realized, wait a minute. So I'm looking at the, the video and like, yes, the comments are like overwhelmingly like, bad Trevor, bad, you did bad thing, <laughs> which man, that's got to suck being a host of anything because people just don't understand. I think they understand, but they forget, you know, you just become a representative for anything that you say, which like, I mean, you, you should, if you're going to say something, you said it, dude, you know, you can't just be like, well, my writers made me do it. Nah, dude, you said it, but still he didn't, he didn't necessarily write this stuff, whatever. It doesn't matter. Point is the comments are overwhelmingly negative, but if you look at the ratings, 20,000 up, 2.1 thousand down, it's still overwhelmingly positive. So I kind of feel like maybe the video just got bombed by like a lot of vegans because, you know, for a while, if you looked up vegan in the YouTube search thing, like this came up, it's got 1.2 million views. So maybe the comments are just overly representing vegans, right? Because look, if you're going to comment, you're probably commenting something negative, not positive, right? You're more likely, most of us are more likely to, to comment if it's something negative. And, it, you know, if you're watching this, this video and you don't like it, you probably don't like it because of the vegan bit. The other stuff is pretty, you know, whatever. Yeah. So I don't know, maybe, maybe most people were totally fine with this and I just kind of blew that out of proportion. I mean, the point with this ultimately is that none of this is um, empirical. None of this is like scientific. You know what I mean? There's no data showing that that this video was positive or negative, had a positive or a negative effect, right? We have no idea. We have no idea uh, whether Ryan's and Mike's videos had a positive or negative effect. I mean, none of it really matters. We're talking about a few videos here uh, that even collectively haven't really reached that many people, right? So I don't even know. Do you see what I mean? This video sucks so hard. I need to get up because my back is killing me. That's another thing too. You know, I've, I've been like in physical pain for several days now, especially yesterday. It's, it's better today, but mm, it's not it's not good. I don't know what to do about my back. I try all these different things and nothing works. If I said too much, it hurts. If I stand or walk too much, it hurts. Sometimes working out makes it better. Sometimes it makes it infinitely worse. Like I just don't, I don't know what to do. And it's kind of depressing because I'm getting older and I feel like it's only going to get worse. And wow, I guess that's how we're ending the video. I hope you guys liked it. <laughs> Subscribe, support the channel, patreon.com slash unnatural vegan. I will have a new video soon. I don't want to end it like that. Overall, everything has been really great. I had such a great time with my family here. It's so great to see them. They, you know, all live, well, some of my family, not super far away, but you know, I can't drive there, right? You still got to take a plane. Um, so I don't get to see them very often. So that was very, very, very nice. And I might have some other family coming too. My dad might be visiting soon. So that's awesome. So overall, everything's great. Tiny baby's great toddler's great. I'm just a negative Nancy. So if one little thing is wrong, I'm just going to focus on that thing. And then everything's terrible. <laughs> and I'm on Twitter too much, which makes everything worse.
Bias was heightened among those higher in right-wing ideologies. I'm shocked. 